is science a fairy tale? I'll start this course by introducing a view many of us already subscribe to. I'll call it scientific exceptionalism. According to scientific exceptionalism, science is special. It is better, if you will, than all other ways of knowing and dealing with the world. Part of what makes it special is that science liberates us from oppressive institutions and forms of thought. Think about the famous story of the scientific revolution. In the beginning, there was the Catholic Church. It told everyone what to believe. Among other things, the Catholic Church told people to believe geocentrism, the theory that the Earth is at the center of the universe. But then scientists came along and they disproved geocentrism, establishing that the Earth is not at the center, the Sun is. Of course, the point here is not just a disagreement about whether the Earth is at the center or not. What was at stake was the authority of the Church. If the Church was wrong about that, what else was it wrong about? The people at the time thought. This triggered, or at least accelerated, a process of social transformation, which made people take their fates into their own hands more and more. When the French revolutionaries overthrew the monarchy under the chance of liberté, égalité, fraternité, less than 200 years later, or when Thomas Jefferson wrote down the self-evident truths of the Declaration of Independence, they owed so much to the unseating of the Church's authority. According to scientific exceptionalism, science is also special because of its distinctive and rational method. This method enables us to discover the truth. What's the method, you might ask? Well, it's supposed to be simple. So simple that even kids can understand it. I took this picture at a children's library, so let's call it the school kids version of the scientific method. It summarizes the scientific method as a six step process. First, you observe the world, then ask a question about that observation, then make a hypothesis, then conduct an experiment, you get it. No one else follows these six steps save for the scientists, which makes science special. And finally, science is supposed to be special because it works. It produces desirable results. Evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins perhaps put it best. Um, planes fly, cars drive, mm. computers com compute. It's an inductive argument. Um, <laughs> um, if, if, you, if you base medicine on, on science, you cure people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. Um, if you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. <laughs> This is also apparent in the fact that the authorities of all major religions in the world are practically begging scientists to hurry up and find a cure for the virus running wild outside right now. So given all that, scientific exceptionalism appears correct. Science is special because it's a liberator, because it has a distinctive and rational method, and because it gets results. Not so fast, says the Austrian-American philosopher Paul Feyerabend. According to Feyerabend, science isn't special. Scientific exceptionalism is false. In fact, he thinks that science is more like a fairy tale which might contain valuable lessons, but shouldn't be taken too literally. Indeed, Feyerabend rejects all three tenets of scientific exceptionalism. He rejects the claim that science is a liberator. He rejects the claim that science has a distinctive method. And he rejects the claim that science has a monopoly over desirable results. Now let's examine each rejection individually. As I said, Feyerabend rejects the claim that science liberates us from oppressive institutions and forms of thought. Feyerabend acknowledges that historically, this used to be true. Science was a liberator in the past. However, he worries that it is not a liberator anymore. Indeed, it may have become an oppressor, an excuse used to silence speech and brainwash people. 
Take global warming, for instance. What would happen to a researcher who is critical of the consensus? Can they speak freely on campuses? Can they get funding for their investigations? I'm not so sure. Or consider the COVID vaccine. Can someone question whether it is rational to vaccinate billions of people with a technology that existed only in a test tube until recently and not be branded as an anti-science lunatic? It seems impossible to me. We may not speak heresy in the midst of the scientific orthodoxy. Luckily, we won't be burned at stake like the heretics who spoke against the church were. But we would be silenced nonetheless. Here, my point isn't that global warming is a hoax or vaccines are made by lizard people to enslave humanity by injecting them with G5 chips. The scientific consensus is most probably right about both issues. My point is rather this. These subjects became more or less undebatable. Scientific consensus on these issues is similar to what church dogma was 400 years ago. So, Feyerabend concludes, science isn't a liberator anymore. It might have even become an oppressor. Feyerabend considers an objection against his accusation that science might have become an oppressor. Here's how the objection goes. We ought to teach and follow the truth once the truth is discovered. Thanks to science, we have already discovered many important truths from the anthropogenic climate change to effective vaccines for the virus. Therefore, science doesn't have to be a liberator anymore. All there is left in these areas is to teach and follow the scientific truth. Farabin disagrees with both premises of this objection. But I will focus on the first one, the claim that once the truth is discovered, we ought to teach and follow it. Consider my predicament. I have an inquisitive four-year-old, and we live next to a retention pond. So I worry that one day when we are distracted, he will walk into that pond and drown himself. I tried explaining to him that water is dangerous by using the truth. You can drown in it. But he is just too young. He can't process the truth. Drowning and even death are too abstract for him. So, like every manipulative but benevolent parent in history, I begrudgingly resorted to lying to protect him from drowning. I told him that there are monsters in that pond. Now, he is so scared of it that he doesn't want to go anywhere near it. If I had followed the advice in the first premise, however, I couldn't have protected my son and my family from a possible tragedy so effectively. So, the first premise is not true. Sometimes, the truth doesn't have to be taught or followed. Going back to scientific exceptionalism, Farabend also rejects the claim that science has a distinctive and rational method. This might strike you as silly. Remember, even kids these days know what the scientific method is. However, the devil is in the details. Let's look closely. It says, make an observation. What's an observation? How do we do it? What should we observe? When? For how long? How many times? None of these questions are answered by this simple methodology. Or take the second step. Ask a question. What kind of a question? Does any question work? For instance, is, do you like my observation good enough? If not, why not? Then we are asked to make a hypothesis. What counts as a hypothesis? I like ice creams and Game of Thrones except for the last season. Is that a hypothesis? Then we are supposed to conduct an experiment. What is an experiment? When does an experiment start and when does it finish? Which aspects of the experiment are relevant and should be recorded? None of these questions are answered by this pamphlet. Here, Fire Robin's point isn't that these rules have nothing to do with science as a practice. Of course, scientists make hypotheses and test them with experiments. 
But thinking that you can write six ambiguous rules down and call it the scientific method is as ridiculous as writing down, cut the patient, fix the bad thing inside, and stitch the patient up and call it the surgical method. That's largely why Feyerabend is skeptical of the idea that science has a neat and tidy set of rules that can separate it from other practices. For him, the concept of the scientific method is a piece of fiction. Finally, there is the claim that only science produces desirable results. This too, according to Feyerabend, is up for debate. Think of the millions of people who swear by so-called natural remedies and alternative medicine. Are they all wrong? Also, it is really not clear what the results of science are going to be. Yes, science improves our lives immensely in the short term. But what about the long-term effects? For instance, thanks to the Industrial Revolution and mass transportation, two things that would have been impossible without science, we are in the process of turning this planet into a barren wasteland. If the result science leads to is a mass extinction event, which will kill 90% of all life, including Homo sapiens, how can we call it desirable? If that's the result, can we really blame the communities like the Amish who prefer a simpler life without science and its results? This is all why Feyerabend thinks that science doesn't have a monopoly over desirable results. So, to recap, scientific exceptionalism is the view that science is special. Science liberates people by discovering the truth with its distinctive method and produces desirable results. Feyerabend, however, rejects scientific exceptionalism. For him, science is no longer a liberator. It might even have become an oppressor. Science doesn't have a distinctive method which makes it better than other ways of engaging the world. And finally, science doesn't have a monopoly over desirable results. If you are like me, by this point you must be wondering what insanity you got yourself into by taking this class. But don't worry, we won't take all this crap from Mr. Feyerabend. In fact, much of this course will focus on attempts to prove him wrong, especially his claim that the scientific method doesn't exist. This brings me to the end of this lecture. Send me an email if you have any questions. Thank you for your patience, and I'll catch you next time.